Hi everyone! Hi Rhonda and the book club. I'm really excited to be here today. I'm Joanna Penn, writing as JF Penn, and I'm really excited that you've chosen Pentecost as your uh, book club read. So hope you've all got your copy or on your ebook reader. And today I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the ideas and the inspiration behind the book um, because it's you know I love research and I hope you'll find some of this interesting. Now there'll be no spoilers, I promise. So if you haven't started the book yet, don't worry, I will just give you some insight into some of the places and things that you'll experience along the way. So the very first inkling for the ideas for Pentecost came when I had a trip to India back uh, about five years ago now, and that's me uh, sitting at, at dawn in Varanasi. Now Varanasi is on the Ganges; it's a, a holy city, and they also it's a, if you die in Varanasi, basically you get to heaven, you escape um, the circle of, of life as such, and and that's the burning gap there. Now visiting that was uh, quite confrontational, I guess. You know, there's bodies being burnt openly there and that scene being there um, really inspired me and if you've read the opening of the book you'll know that that is the first scene and so when I, I was there and, and actually just uh, just on, as an aside whilst you're doing your book club at the moment I'm back in India I'm cycling uh, in South India so that's pretty exciting I love to travel and my travels are a, a real source of inspiration for me so when I got the idea at this point it was really the book was going to be Kind of about Eastern stuff and it was going to be called Mandala because the other thing that was happening at the time was this book. Now any of you who know a bit about psychology, Carl Jung is obviously you know huge in, in psychology um, and this book, the red book, it's, it's huge, it's like huge huge oversized full colour lovely pages book. It's actually uh, his personal diary of a kind of breakdown that he had and he did art therapy whilst he was going through this and this is one of his mandalas and um, the book was going to be called Mandala, it was going to be an exploration of the kind of unconscious and um, you know having crimes and thriller stuff as well but you know in terms of the theme but behind the series. Um, now Jung's Red Book uh, had been kept secret by his family um, for many years and had only just been released to the public. So these drawings were, you know, just sort of uh, available to the public for the first time and this sort of burst into my consciousness. So the book was going to be Mandela and then I saw um, this image. Uh, the one on the right is, is with, both of these are within the book, and um, the snake there with its, um, you know, its gorgeous, gorgeous uh, artwork that he did all, all himself. Um, but the one on the right is a, if you can see at the bottom there, there's a man prostrating himself before a, a, a small object, could be a stone, <laughs> and a, a pillar of fire coming out. Now that phrase, pillar of fire, if you if you read the Bible, um, is essentially at Pentecost you know that uh, what the pillar of fire in, in Exodus with the you know God in the desert but in the the tongues of fire coming down um, to on the apostles at Pentecost is what I, what kind of came into my head was sort of you know the tongues of flame and and when I looked at this I thought well what if you know that would be really interesting if there was some object that could have this effect so again, another travel. So, you know, my travels just seem to inform all my ideas and then they all kind of mush up into some kind of crazy thing. But I was in Venice and you can see there, that's me in my puffball jacket because it was free freezing. We were there for New Year and it was flooded. So yeah, I'm flooded Venice being beautiful, but quite tragic in a way. But inside um, St Mark's Basilica is this tremendous dome, a uh, gold dome, and on it you can see there some of the figures um, are the apostles with the, the tongue of flame uh, alighting on their heads from the throne of heaven. So it's the Pentecost dome. And when I, I kind of put all these ideas together and thought about, okay, well, what if each of those apostles had a stone um, that they kept in memory of their of their time with Jesus, and um, you know, what if they were buried with the bodies of the apostles? Because of course, the history of the early church, which I studied, um, I did theology at uh, the University of Oxford, Mansfield College, um, which also comes into the uh, into the book. Um, but essentially, I thought you know, it'd be really interesting to look at where did the bodies of the the saints uh, end up and you know could there be something mysterious uh, hidden with the bodies. So um, as I just mentioned Oxford but there's uh, some of the places there that I, I talk about in the book that's the Pitt Rivers Museum which is amazing uh, it's like this mad Victorian explorer went around the world kind of 
taking stuff from tribes and terrible really but amazing museum full of interesting things um, and the Bodleian where I used to study that's the Radcliffe camera where my um, my actual library was a theology library and uh, once you get into the series you'll see later on um, that there's a sort of virtual library with uh, arcane and, and that's modeled on on the Bodleian so that's quite exciting so when I was doing my research around where the bones and the relics of uh, the saints ended up, that the really famous one and the most obvious one is St. James in Santiago de Compostela in Spain. It's a brilliant cathedral there. And they have this amazing Botafumero, it's called, it's 80 kilogram big incense sort of swinger and it, it swings over the congregation and it's, it's very famous and I really wanted to get that into the plot so uh, when you get to that bit I hope you'll enjoy um, how I wove that in but it was fascinating to me to kind of look at what is real or at least belief um, for a lot of people and then if weaving that into a thriller how can I make it so true that you think it could possibly be real. Um, that's kind of my aim. And what, what's quite amazing about many of the things that as I researched was the synchronicity, which is also a Jungian um, kind of thing, that things happen uh, more than coincidence, let's say, slightly more than coincidence. I'll come back to that in a minute. So obviously St Peter in Rome would be another obvious place. Um, the bones of St Peter lie beneath the cathedral um, and there's some amazing stuff in St Peter's which I obviously needed to bring into the story um, and there's uh, there's me outside there and, and that on the left that's actually uh, the Feast of Epiphany when we managed to get into um, the Basilica and see the Pope which was pretty exciting before he abdicated of course. Um, so yeah I, I love Rome, I love it Italy. And I love Israel. So um, if you do get into the series, you'll find that Jerusalem um, and Israel come into the book over and over again. And Morgan Sierra, uh, my main character, is uh, was brought up uh, in Israel. Her father's Jewish. Um, so I, I love to weave that in. And, and Jerusalem is a very important place to me. It's probably my spiritual home, I would say. Um, I, I obsess about it. I read about it all the time. And I, I would love to live there for a while. Um, so I'm really fascinated by the place. And the Church of the Holy Spirit sepulchre is just mad. Um, I couldn't find any pictures of the um, of the the stuff on the on the roof which is in the book uh, which is the Ethiopian Coptic church which are just really interesting and obviously very poor but um, the, the church is just a mishmash of all the different Christian religions is fascinating. I should say the different denominations of the Christian religion. So yeah fascinating place. Then, um, you know, talking back again about uh, synchronicity, um, when I brought Jung into the story um, in various ways, after starting with the Red Book and the Manzilla and bringing him in to the story later on, I found some amazing synchronicity in the fact that he was in America. Um, this is the, the famous picture that's Jung and um, Freud at uh, Clark University. And essentially they went on this, they, they launched psychology in America in the 1920s. And this famous meeting um, I was able to use in, in the book and only kind of found that after I went into the research of, of where he would have been at different dates and how it would have fitted in with my story. So amazing piece of synchronicity there. And um, this is the biosphere in Arizona, another place that has been in my mind for many years and really fascinated with the storms, electric storms that you have in America. Um, so I hope you can see that I kind of weave in all of this stuff into the book and that that adds a kind of layer of intrigue and interest and sense of place to the book um, and I you know I am an obsessive traveller so all my books feature interesting locations. Okay so I hope you found that interesting and what we what we can do is if you've got any questions uh, Rhonda will email me those and I'll do you another little video um, answering any other questions that you will have about anything whether it's the book or the writing life or um, being English <laughs> whatever else you you fancy. Um, the series is available Pentecost is in print ebook and audiobook as are the other arcane books. Uh, Prophecy is about the the hunt for the devil's bible which contains curses that 
that will uh, basically do evil things to mankind and it has again a psychological edge to it um, that the psychology of obedience so you know when when Abraham was going to sacrifice his son um, or when people do things in the name of God so I'm really interested in those um, the Stanley Milgram experiments from America in the 50s that there's a lot of interesting stuff in prophecy in terms of psychological research behind the thriller <laughs> and then Exodus is about the hunt for the Ark of the Covenant as the Middle East counts down to a religious war and in that one I did a lot of research obviously about where the Ark of the Covenant might actually be and that was brilliant I really enjoyed that and we go into Ethiopia and Jordan and fascinating places like that um, and then One Day in Budapest which has just come out um, as you watch this uh, is more of a political thriller if you like Daniel Silver um, you might like uh, this book it's got a political edge it's kind of a day of terrorism um, by neo-nationalists in Budapest um, and Morgan Sierra just happens to be there um, delivering some um, some ancient objects uh, back to the synagogue uh, as it all kicks off so it's kind of it's a very um, high-paced uh, novella but anyway that those are my books you can also sign up uh, for my list if you'd like to get specials or giveaways that type of thing at jfpen.com forward slash list okay well I hope you enjoy the book I look forward to hearing from you all and um, yeah thanks for having me Rhonda and thanks to all of you in the book group